in you. All right, we'll go on a short break now, and when we return, we will look at the role government needs to play in ensuring education continues in the areas affected with insurgency. I am intelligent. I am incisive. I am passionate. I am focused. I am diplomatic. I am creative. I am people oriented. I am logical. I am detailed. I am determined. I am inquisitive. I am trained. You're welcome back to Deadline Abuja. I still have with me here in the studio Professor Maggie Ensign, the president of the American University of Nigeria. You're welcome back to the program. Thank you. Um, you said something just a while back about the Chibok Initiative. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me a bit more about that, that project? Well, we'll be announcing it formally in two weeks, but what I can say is we're committed to educating as many of those girls who escaped um, from that first kidnapping as we can. So we'll be announcing a major initiative in two weeks about how we're doing that. Okay, um, but what you're, you're hoping to work with those who have ex escaped? Yes, yes, and to bring them for an education with us. We have a secondary school as well as the university, so we're well placed to be able to assist them and their families. We still have a, a up to 200, over 200 girls yes. still in, in captivity. Yes. Now we're, we're looking to a time when these girls are brought back safe and alive. Now the question here is, when they secure their freedom, do mm -hmm. you see the eventuality of their being integrated back into the school system? I certainly would hope so. That's the goal for all of us, that these young girls and women are released safely, that their lives can be rebuilt, and that their education continues. And we'll do everything we can within our means as a university to make sure that, that um, we can support them. Okay, one of the problems we face in the North generally mm -hmm. is um, a, a low rate of literacy, Yes, a low level of literacy, mm -hmm. and then there, there seems to be this, uh, um, the some most of them are averse to actually going to school. Hmm. Now, um, let's, let's look at this, how it has affected the output now. For instance, we have a uh, Wayek. The yes. recent result yes. was very low. Right. And then, if you look at what comes out of that part of the country, mm -hmm. you're going to find out that it's going to also be low. So, how, how, how? What are things that can be done to change this perception? Sure. Let me challenge you on one of your assumptions okay. that parents don't want their children to be in school. That's contrary to everything I've learned as president of the American University of Nigeria. With our Adamawa Peace Council, I mentioned we have all of the religious leaders, all the community leaders in the region in that Peace Council. Every one of them wants to make sure their children get the best education. So I think that's important that we all understand that. I've never met one parent who says, I don't want my children to have a great education. There are certainly the barriers that you've discussed. Um, and I really think one of the major challenges in Nigeria is a demographic challenge. As I say to my students, you're one of the fastest growing countries in the world. I used to say to them, you'll be the leaders of the fifth largest country in 20 years. I was wrong. The new data is out. Nigeria will be the third largest by 2050. So that's a positive thing. You'll be a very, an even more powerful country than you are now. But it, for education, it has very specific consequences. I'll give you an example. Right now, today, Nigeria needs 200,000 primary school teachers that it doesn't have. By next year, you'll need another 300,000 to respond to this demographic challenge. It's simply not possible, I believe, to train all those teachers to build all those schools. It's one of the reasons why at AUN we're trying to pioneer the use of technology in training teachers and in training students. We've been training teachers in the Federal College of Education. I told you we're using our own resources to introduce Samsung and iPad tablets throughout the primary schools in Yola and downloading applications that are written in their languages. The data is remarkable in terms of how these young people from a poor part of the country, their reading and their math scores are increasing at what we say is a statistically significant rate. 
there are solutions. I think it's really important that we don't just focus on the problems as a media, as a country, but we talk about solutions and there are solutions there. My dream is that someday every young person in Nigeria has a phone, a smartphone, where they can read their books and they can do their math. And that's a, that's a possible um, future, I believe. All right, it's a, it's a possible future that also has to start off from somewhere, yes. which is increasing the level of income, the, the, the um, level of income per day for mm -hmm. each family. Well, the two go together. The more people are educated, the more likely they'll be able to either start their own business or be employed. So one, again, one of our projects with the Automawa Peace Initiative is we're working with over 100 women now who have very little education um, and training them to make sure their skills come up. They're actually now all generating enough income from the goods they make to pay for their students' education and for their fees. So all these things go together. The more an individual is educated, the more likely they are to have employment. The higher of lev level of education in a country is directly associated with its economic growth rate. And Nigeria is at a real tipping point. You're already the biggest economy on the continent. But now what's really critical is that education is very widespread and deep and that the right knowledge and skills um, are available to everyone no matter what region they live in. Let's take a look at uh, girl child education. Yes. The major crime of these girls that were abducted yes. was that they were girls yes. and they were in school. Right. Now looking at what the, the price they are having to pay, this is over 100 days yeah. in captivity. Looking at the price that they have to pay yes. because they try to go to school, yes. what can be done to encourage other girls to continue to go to school? Well, of course, it's outrageous what has happened and the world's outrage is still very strong on this. Everyone deserves an education, girl, boy, male, female, no matter what age you are. So the Safe School Initiative is important. Um, the government making sure that region is safe and secure. Once that happens then, I think there needs to be very large scale initiatives from the federal government, from the private sector, from universities to make sure we're bringing up the level of education in the region. Now let's look at what's the role of the federal government. Everybody expects a lot from the government. Yes. Now what should the government be doing to bring back the confidence in the school systems in the North East to start with? Well, you know, as I said earlier, I think the primary responsibility is physical safety and security, which they're working on. Then because of this rapid, rapid population growth rate, um, I think we have to think outside of the box about how we provide and deliver education. Um, and AUN, the American University of Nigeria, is trying to be a pioneer. We're blessed with technology that most other universities don't have in Nigeria. Google paid us a visit 18 months ago, and they said on their worldwide usage map, there was a very bright light coming from Northeast Nigeria. It was us, because of our usage of electronic resources. Recently, we opened our new library. Why do you need a library in this time of digital resources? But it's a beautiful library. But what I'm most proud of is five fellow vice chancellors showed up, and we handed them digital libraries so they can build up their libraries. Again, there are a lot of solutions to education, to safety and security, and I think that's what we need to focus on. And we believe quite strongly at AUN that technology can be a really powerful force for improving people's lives, not just in education, but in health and other areas. And we're trying to pioneer some of those solutions. All right, so looking at the role the government has to play, we know that um, bringing down insurgency could be achieved in a way whereby education mm -hmm. is used as a tool. Yes. Now, how can, what, how, how can government key into that, using education as a tool to stop insurgency? Um, I think there are two separate things here. I think the insurgency has to be stopped, and then you quickly reintroduce programs to bring up the level of development in that region, in education, in health, in entrepreneurship, and I'm sure the federal government is ready to jump in with those good programs as soon as this is support stopped. Let me contrast what's happening in the states north of us with where we are again in Yola 
in Adamawa State, where the university is located. We believe quite strongly that the development programs that have been put in place the last three or four years really help to protect our community. And to me, it's a real reminder when people's lives are improving, when you're dealing with those vulnerable children. Remember I said the members of the Adamawa Peace Initiative tell us at the university which children we should be helping. Mm -hmm. And we're all coming up together. Let me give you an example. We do free IT training of those vulnerable children, free eight-week training courses. We did a graduation a month ago, and the best student in the class, based on exams our computer science, fac science faculty gave, was a 13-year-old boy who had no formal schooling. But he was so smart and so motivated that he did the best. So we all went together to give him a scholarship to continue. We all need to be doing that. We can't afford to lose any of these beautiful young children in your country because they're all full of potential. Education for all, EFA, yes. is a de me Millennium Development Target. Right. Education for all. What we've been pushing in Nigeria so far mm -hmm. is um, basic education. Right. And that is just the primary education. Exactly. Recently, some people brought up taking it up to the tertiary. Yes. What do you have to say about that? I completely agree. Let's look at Nigeria's position. So you're soon to become the third largest country in the world. It means your graduates will competing will be competing not only with each other but with the Chinese and the Indians and the Americans. Nigerians need a world class education from primary school through higher higher education or tertiary education as you call it. For you to take your place even more on the world stage, the level of education has to come up at all levels. And it's very doable. It takes commitment and it takes resources, but I think people are beginning to understand that. Pull them wrap it up here. Okay. Thank you, very Thank much you for, for having coming. me. Cool. Thank you. Well, thank you as always for your comments. Let's take this one now from Yusuf, who wrote in from Abeokuta, the capital of Ogun State. Reacting to the interview we had last week with the Minister of Lands, Housing and Urban Development, he says, The Minister of Housing sure knows what to do to provide affordable housing for Nigerians by exploiting the opportunities of discussing directly with manufacturers of building materials to get waivers. I only pray the eventual beneficiaries are those initially targeted. Well, thank you, Yusuf. Keep your views coming uh, using the address and Twitter handle on your screen. And don't forget, you can view the program on youtube.com forward slash channels web forward slash videos. And you can make your comments after viewing the current video as well as older episodes of the program. Thank you for watching this week. I'm Gloria Umezuki.